Hey everyone, welcome back. Doing something a little different this time around. Uh, usually I do a vinyl update and uh, just show you what I got all the time, but um, if you guys have been noticing in recent months, I've been kind of coming back doing more videos more than more than ever, really. And uh, just wanted to do something a little different. So I'm going to do a little video series here and you guys can respond if you want to. It's just kind of a video response if you'd like. You know, that'd be kind of cool to see. I figured I would do something on the topic of private press records. Um, you know, homemade, limited quantity records from the past. And it's just an idea that hit me, and I gathered all what I have here tonight. So I'm recording this fr or, uh, Thursday evening, so I may post it uh, tomorrow or over the weekend. But... Um, because I do have a lot to share, and this may be a two-part video, you know, may come back and do a second part because I have quite a bit and don't know how many I'm going to flip through, so we'll see how it goes. So these in no particular order, just how I grabbed them out of my, uh, uh, my, uh, I don't have shelves, but, uh, my crates. Um, just trying to think of the word. But anyways, let's get started. So... Um, like I said, no particular order, and and if you don't understand what, you know, because some people, it's not a hot topic, really, you know, when we're talking about private press records, because um, I've never really seen anybody do this type of video, so there may be people that come across this that are, you know, interested in the private press or the Acid Archive kind of material, so this this video is also for them. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoy, and for those that don't really understand the whole private press scene, um, you'll understand probably once I show the, these type of records. Um, so like I said, they're kind of local, homemade, you know, do-it-yourself kind of records. And uh, some of the best. I mean, I love this kind of stuff. Even though I would say 80% 80, 80 of it's probably reissues, but um, I love the music, so... Let's get started. Starting off with like my all-time favorite here, Just No Brian and Jake. Time will tell. I've never uh, actually gave this a good write-up here on YouTube, but this is phenomenal stuff. I mean, came out in 1977. It's like lounge psych and some of the best. I mean, some of the best I ever heard. And like I said, I want to kind of flip through these really quick because I have. I've got a ton to share and probably do about 20 minute video. We'll see how it goes. CA Quintet. Um, I think they pressed 600 copies of this and um, hell of an item to find nowadays. This is a Sunday's reissue. Some killer psych. I mean, what else can you say about that one? Um, and some of these are not psychedelic, so let's keep that in mind. I mean, they're not full on psych, but. You'll see what I mean. Uh, this is Forever Amber, The Love Cycle. They only pressed 99 copies of this one originally, and uh, something to do with the tax at the time. They didn't want to go over 100, so kept it on a low budget. Some phenomenal UK pop psych. Uh, I think they only made maybe 300 copies of this. Music Emporium. It's 1969, I think. Um, I mean, it's like kind of gothic psych, it's really dark in a lot of spots, really good. This one makes a top spot as far as private records go. Complex, this came out in 1970 and I mean I, I regard this as highly as like you know some of the top UK psych of all time like people like will say Tomorrow, self-titled and Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This one's up there, I mean I rank it that high. Um, as far as Christian site goes, this one's way up there. Uh, the search Party, Montgomery Chapel. This is a Void reissue, and this this one actually sounds pretty good. Some Void copies are not the best sound quality. Um, here's another one. This one's an original, original copy. America, Where Are You? by uh, Concern. This is actually Guitar Ensemble under a different name. 
I think they only pressed 200 copies of this. So this was a cool find. Um, got this for a good price and this is really good. Um, check out the tracks. Uh, which one is it? Uh, I think it's on side one. Lone Man's Plea and Abortion, I think, are both on YouTube, so check those tracks out. This is Magic Ship. This is one of the very first uh, psych records I found out about in my youth. So glad I did, too, because this one's really good. Gearson, copy. Mount sixty or set 1970. This one as well. It's one of the early ones for me. Uh, it's also a private record. Haymarket Square, Magic Lantern, another Gearson copy. I love this label. You know for reissues. Um, Chicago-based Acid Rock, really good. Some of the best uh, hard crunching private presses out there. St. Anthony's Fire. It's like a power trio. Zonk label, <laughs> and that's what the original label is on. So, this is killer hard rock. Okay, and this is an original copy I actually found locally. I cannot believe I did too. This is Los Bandidos Chavo. Um, I think this is kind of like a lounge group, and they have like a nine year old drummer. Um, so, this is pretty cool stuff. This one here I uh, I bought a long time ago, not a long time ago, maybe last year, and you know the cover looked intriguing enough, and now that I see it online, people are selling it for like 20 bucks, and this is really bad. <laughs> this is a really bad private record. Uh, Simple Truth Reasons. I don't even remember what this sounded like. I think it's kind of like a country rock thing, but it's pretty bad. Do not recommend that one. Corridor of Faces, Lazy Smoke. This one's killer. This is way opposite end of the last record I showed. Uh, this is a reissue on green vinyl on the Onx label. I think that was the original label. Uh, based out of Boston area, I think. This is one of the cooler private press records I got. Um, reissue, but pretty cool record. KS Ratliff and the Black Magic. Fear of the Night. This is kind of a recent reissue on Subliminal Sounds. Uh, I think this kid was still in high school and he's still rocking the beard at that young age. Uh, this is kind of like bar band, kind of Midwestern hard rock kind of thing, but it's totally, like I said, it's kind of a do-it-yourself project and strange but beautiful music. <laughs> And this is the original copy, uh, Bill Sharkey. I forget the title of this. It's like his initials here. Uh, looking at the cover, it's it kind of looks like me, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, this is uh, kind of nice pop rock. It's got some folky Baroque elements in it too, so this is pretty cool. Nice uh, cheapy. And uh, this is one of the cooler items I have. I got two copies of this. Warren Winters Band, Crossbar Hotel. It's a biker, biker psych folk kind of stuff. Pretty cool. I also got his first album I didn't grab, but I'm, I would say I'm showing about 90% of what I got here at my house. This is uh, Jimmy Carter and Dallas County Green. Summer Brings the Sunshine. Uh, this one can be a pretty tough one to find. Nice uh, rural country rock, the good kind. Uh, Cosmic Michael. This is on the Outsider label. Got this for a good price. Comes with the reproduction of the poster that came with it. It's a singer-songwriter sort of thing from the 80s, but very much psychedelic in its own way. Uh, Bob Trimble. Iron Curtain Innocence. So I got, uh, this reissue is pretty cheap. I got this for like maybe eight bucks. What a cover. Cool cover. <clears throat> this is another Subliminal Sounds reissue. Uh, what's the title? With You in My Arms. John Michael Rock. Uh, 
I think I'm Facebook friends with this guy. It's kind of like a AOR psych rock kind of thing. It's pretty cool. This one gets talked up pretty well. Stan Hubs Crystal. This came out in 1982. Uh, nice reissue. It's got a reproduction of like a lyric book inside. Um, recorded in like his cabin out in the woods. Pretty cool. Pretty uh, out there. This is a cool piece. Uh, Michelangelo. And this is the Void reissue, which I would say avoid the Void issue. <laughs> Um, sound quality is not very good on this. Hopefully I can up upgrade sometime in the future. But uh, still a great album. Uh, which one's this? Alma... I always forget the title. Alma Gam? Just Others? This is a really good singer-songwriter sort of vibe, but it's a duo. Uh, British folk psych. Very good. Is that Gearson copy? Um, Deep Night, The Sixth Station, and a lot of these private records, you know, definitely have these sort of generic covers, you know, sunsets and sunrises, um, looking over an ocean sort of covers on the beach and stuff. This is, I think this was recorded in like a church uh, one evening and it was all mixed in one take. So you'll find out a lot of these records are just, they have this, this own unique charm to them. And I showed this one recently. The McIlroy Brothers. Uh, John Scogans. Pressed for Time. This is a recent reissue. You can get pretty cheap. It's kind of like a power pop sort of thing. Corcoran Brothers. I think you can pick this one up fairly cheap yet. It's a folk duo. Uh, I showed this one not too long ago either. Uh, Louis Lumour. This is sort of a ambient kind of pop, piano pop sort of thing, but very low key, very late at night sort of listen. Really, uh, really spiritual in sound and stuff. It's really cool. This is a cool private record, um, an original copy I found locally because uh, it's a local album. Heaven. This came out in 1970, I believe. And I'm also looking for another record on this label, uh, WW. Uh, I forget the man's name, but it's a, it's a singer-songwriter album. goes for a lot of money. Um, it's the only two records known on this label, so I'd like to find it someday. This one gets talked about a lot, and there's a lot of good hype for this one. This one's really good. There's a New Dawn. This is a reissue on uh, Jackpot Records. Um, it's kind of like loungy, but there's this killer fuzz guitar going through, really tight harmonies and rhythms. It's kind of simplistic, but they deliver. It's really good. Folk music from the Red Herring. And again, another kind of generic cover. You get these kind of generic uh, private releases, these vanity presses. And, uh... Century was one of those labels that made a lot of like kind of limited pressing uh, kind of records as well as RPC label and uh, this one features a young what's his, who is it Dan Fogelberg you can see him there pretty cool and this is an original copy I found in Texas uh, at Josie Records Rebirth Into the Light it's kind of a Christian folk rock thing, but the title track is the best thing on this. this the title track is awesome. Um, then, of course, we have Bent Wind, another one that's really hyped as far as uh, Canadian private records go. Pretty cool stuff. Doing pretty good on time. Um, I may actually end it after this little stack here, since we're uh, doing well on time here. Uh, Neutral Spirits. This is a Void reissue. This came out in 72, and I believe most of the copies of this got, like, water damaged in someone's basement or something. Some story along, along the lines of that. Some cool 
fuzz guitar, but some of the songs get really repetitive. As I was just saying, uh, RPC label, this is a reissue, but they have these like generic covers, you know, with the clouds and the ocean. Backbone of the Nation, uh, Dry Water. This is one I've kind of been debating about maybe selling. Uh, it's not that I, it's just I don't play it very often and it's, it's decent for the material. I think out of all the private records I've shown, this is probably the one that had the least amount of quantity uh, records pressed. It only had like apparently 25 copies of this pressed originally, so <laughs> uh, I don't think any original copy would pop up anytime soon. And again, another local record I found, a uh, private record, Lion Hill. I came across another copy of this for cheap. I should have picked it up. This is signed by all the band members. This is kind of a Midwest rock group. A um, little bit in the country rock, but they're really, really tight performances. And I think I was Facebook friends with one of the members here who passed away recently. Um, so this is really good. 77, I think, came out. Um, another original pressing. This is a Canadian record. Ben Bogart. Got this one sealed. Um, I opened it, though. It's kind of like a lounge record. With uh, some some moments, in, they dip into psychedelia. The track UFO is the one to check out. Uh, as far as like cheap private records go, this one's really good. Jonathan and Charles, another week to go. It's kind of a Christian record. I got this for like a buck on eBay. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. It's really tight. Uh, Zian pop psych or folk rock. This is one of my favorites. Um, just alongside just no Brian and Jake, the summer sounds up down. Uh, it's a garage band, but they kind of dip a little bit into psychedelia with some hazy organ, nice vocal harmonies. Um, kind of reminds me of The Maze in some spots. Armageddon, The Maze. Uh, it's a reissue on Radioactive, but the sound quality is really good. So uh, check this one out. This is highly recommended as far as garage psych goes, the, uh, the two genres. The George Edwards group. This was originally titled, uh, I think, 33. What is it? 3838. That's for how long the record is. Um, it's pretty good. Some people really like this. I think it's, I think it's got its moments. It's got some really great tracks, but also some kind of, kind of weak interludes and stuff. It's pretty good. Uh, this is an original copy, A Reason to Give, Dave Dilly. Uh, it's like this guy was trying to uh, um, kind of give this message across. It's kind of, a, again, one of those Christian records trying to just persuade drug users, stuff like that, but musically really works. Uh, Bitter Blood Street Theater. This is their second album, Volume 2. Uh, you can spot this cheap sometimes, this and their first one. If you uh, like that kind of late or late 60s, early 70s hard rock, um, even though this came out in 78, this one rocks. This one got some good moments in it. Um, the Jerry Bush Group, this is original copy. I think I got this one sealed too. Um, City Boy. This one's not much. This one's not so much psych, but it's more of a AOR kind of thing. But there are some really nice tracks on here. Um, it's just one you just never see talked about. Um, Twilight New Ages. This was like a school choir making an album in this guy's basement. Uh, sort of a folky. It's got folk moments, some pop, a whole mixture of things, but it just sounds really homemade and it's got a nice homemade charm to it. 
let's see. This one gets regarded in the psych realm. DR Hooker, The Truth. Some people kind of reference the doors a little bit here and there. It's really its own thing. I mean, this guy is like, thinks he's the Messiah and he's writing all these kind of mystical sort of, sort of songs. Really good. And I've got two more here. This is original copy. Probably one of the more unique ones in this pile. This is, uh, God, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, I can't even find it. Bobby Brown. The Enlightening Beam of Exonda. So this dude made his own, like, homemade instruments on this machine, and he would play stuff with his foot, and he would go around, like, selling this album in his van in, like, Hawaii and along the coast of California, um, you know, and would sell this album, and he'd usually write on the back, too. It's more rare to find a copy not signed by him, which is kind of cool. So, Bobby Brown, The Enlightening Beam of Exonda. This is a real cool one to check out. Just naturally psychedelic in sound. Uh, Jeffrey Lieberman, the last one here. This is his self-titled. I think it's his first album. It's a reissue on the Outsider label. He's based out of Chicago. And he would uh, raise funds that he got from that album to... Uh, the funds that he got from uh, people purchasing his album to like some children hospital I think was what the funds went to so as you can see I mean there's so many so many awesome stories you know when we talk about these um, homemade privately pressed records um, they're just so cool and uh, like I said that's about 90% of what I got here and I think I do have some more to share but I will leave that for next time so um, may not be as long as this one so we'll see how it goes just have another good stack alongside so don't want to keep you any further and hope you guys have a good weekend um i should be back to making you know a vinyl update maybe after this series um because i only got one new record so otherwise i still got things coming in so take care everyone and we will see you soon